Hello there. Um, I want to talk a bit today about inner child work, the importance of it, how to do it, what its benefits are, and what you can expect if you commit to that kind of a process. So, when we are children, we come into our bodies as pure source light, so connected, so fresh from the other side where we knew our oneness and divinity innately and we had no sense of separation from our mother or from anything. We only had this kind of sense of oneness. So coming out of the womb is like stripping away this sense of oneness and over time that every sort of emotion or interaction or energy or vibration that a baby or child or adolescent is exposed to leaves an imprint on that child and affects their development and these effects carry out into adulthood and they affect every little thing that happens in our psyche all the time. <laughs> so whenever a child comes to repress an emotion that emotion becomes kind of lodged into the body. Very literally, when you suppress an emotion, you create kind of a split in your personality. Um, there's the conscious self that you create and become that is not feeling that negative emotion that was not approved by family members or the world around you, and then the bad negative emotion that the child feels in a temper tantrum or crying fit or something of this nature, children experience a lot of emotion and oftentimes the catch is that children are not feeling just their emotion. They're feeling someone else's emotion and they engage in this process of being conditioned to a set of societal and familial agreements by pushing all of that stuff down. And again, the problem is that every time you push something down, there's the split that happens. And people become very fragmented very quickly because all of those n negative emotions that they learn to keep and tuck away, and oftentimes th this doesn't just happen with negative emotions, it happens with positive emotions. When childlike joy and wonder and play is... Um, inhibited by a parent because maybe it's not the right setting according to our society or maybe it's not the right moment or maybe mommy and daddy don't feel as happy as the little joyful child that emotion becomes suppressed and the child learns that that emotion is wrong and it's important to realize that most of this doesn't happen at the level of thought it happens at the level of vibration and emotion that children up into a certain age around seven or eight are really in more of a feeling experience than a thinking experience. As adults, our own thoughts about reality, our mental projections and our fantasies have, as just, have just as much of a role in our emotional experience as anything else um, until we begin to practice mindfulness and bring ourselves into the present moment reality. We tend to let those mental abstractions kind of cloud and distort what's actually happening. And children um, are so engaged in the world around them, they feel everything, always. And they don't experience as much their thoughts about things as they experience the raw emotional energy that other people are projecting at them or that is being projected in a room by an argument through the parents. And Every single one of those emotions that the child suppresses and holds within becomes a pattern that then continues to play out in different forms. And as you begin to awaken and you understand how energy works, when you notice a pattern in your life, you can really see that it's repeating again and again the same kind of dynamic in a relationship the same kind of interaction with people. And if you really become perceptive, you start to see that that same pattern is not just affecting your relationships with other people, it's affecting your relationship primarily with yourself, um, yourself as the one, as source, um, 
my teacher called that the God drama. That's the highest level at which you play this out. It's a way that you keep yourself separate, essentially. But we can keep ourselves separate from other people. We can keep ourselves separate from our creativity, from our business projects, from anything really. We'll play out the same kind of pattern. And the pattern is ingrained in childhood and has its roots in other lifetimes. And whether you work at it through the early childhood experiences or whether you work at it from other lifetimes, it's really just about what point you're at in your journey and what's really ready to come up. Um, the same kind of principles really apply to inner child work and past life regression, whereas inner child work can bring back this innate divine child, this playfulness and spontaneity that helps us really feel humble, connected, and in touch with our needs. Um, our other lifetimes, when we begin to unravel those, can bring us these spiritual gifts and remembrances from long ago that then become part of our life again. We can even awaken tools, memories, um, even gifts. If we were a healer or an artist in a past lifetime, when we were heal the wounds from those lifetimes and remember them, those gifts can come back. So with childhood wounds, um, I've learned many different processes or it's actually the same process in a different setting from different or, or a different format a different format from a couple of different people and all of these really work with feeling the emotion feeling the emotion is the first step healing is feeling and feeling is healing so rather than trying to maintain a state of total equanimity when we can meet, greet our emotions with a degree of thankfulness and an understanding that we're not feeling this for no reason and there may be a situation in our lives that is bringing this emotion to the surface it's not the first time we're feeling it and that situation in our lives is something that's been attracted to us in order to get in touch with this emotion a pattern that we've been evading for quite a while. The pattern itself stems back from childhood and yes, other lifetimes as well. The more times we evade it and find a way to suppress the emotion, we're reinforcing that split and that fragmentation that occurred the very first time that we learned that that emotion is bad. And again, that emotion can be even happiness. More often it's an emotion of anger, sadness, fear that becomes suppress, deny, avoided, and creates the split. So we reunite those parts of ourselves that have split when we let ourselves feel the emotion. And the next steps of inner child work are to relive those memories, to begin to recall without necessarily being so attached to which one we find, which memory we dig up, just allowing all of those memories to come to the surface. And there are usually many, many memories with that same emotional imprint. And this work is not something that is necessarily um, very easy the first times you do it. And it's very important to have somebody guide you if you've experienced a lot of trauma. Sometimes you can just do a guided meditation of regressing to these early memories on your own and that's just as helpful. For most people, I think once you learn the process, you can continue to do it with other memories because usually there are some surface level ones that come and then some deeper ones. And when you get through kind of the deepest traumas, it becomes kind of a natural process that you can do at any time. So digging up these memories, allowing them to surface, um, and then changing the memory. So this part may baffle some. Um, it may seem like, oh, I'm just telling myself that something that isn't real is, is real. And yes, essentially. Um, why do we do this? And it's because, again, everything that we think, imagine, and create with our minds becomes a real perceptual reality. and when we override the memory that's in our bodies and in our subconscious with a positively expressed memory with something that brings us joy and happiness 
we begin to override that pattern in our body and our subconscious with a new pattern. And this new pattern will really sink in the more times you come back to different memories of the same theme or different themes. Sometimes you have to do this many times and recreate that new memory many times. Though the idea is that now that you have gone in into a slight hypnagogic state and changed your memory by reimagining it, reinventing it, connecting with yourself and with your body, in order to find a more better suited experience and memory, you will have all of that positive energy every time that memory comes back, or every time the scent that triggers that memory comes back, or every time an image or a location that triggers that memory comes back, you will now have that positive memory running through your circuitry. Um, and the next steps of inner child work are different according to everybody who teaches it, though it involves letting this inner child, this fragment um, of your inner child, come back and become part of you again. So remember that literally every time you suppress this emotion, it's like you create a little mini me that's running around in your subconscious. It's a fragment of you that's lost. And oftentimes pain in your body or injuries or things in your chakra system that are out of alignment are actually broken apart inner children or inner adolescents or inner young adults that are stuck inside your body and haven't come to your center to become whole with you again. So the last part of the inner child process is really to say to this inner child, are you ready to become whole with me again? Are you ready to be one with me again? And as you do, that child will reunite with your energy field and you usually feel this, like you're more of yourself and that things are lighter and brighter. And you continue because there are many different fragments of the inner child that everyone has to go through. So, again, I first learned this with a teacher of mine in Guatemala, and I refined my understanding of this process through the work of Teal Swan. Her book, The Completion Process, is really wonderful. And when I do inner child work with people, I combine the approach that I learned initially with the completion process in order to kind of bring a complete, full level of healing. So. This is something that can be done in person or even on the phone or on Skype um, at a distance. And really, it just takes your willingness to go back into those memories and feel deeply. So, you want to do inner child work in a set and setting where you feel really comfortable and really at ease in your body, where you can really allow yourself to relax and you feel safe. The first thing you'll do is you'll ask that emotion to come back. The last very strong negatively charged emotion that you have felt to come back into your body and allow it. Notice where you feel it and simply sit with it. And then you'll ask for that memory to surface. Um, you only ask for the memory to surface once you've completely allowed that emotion. Teal Swan calls that part of it the emotional vipassana, where you let yourself feel completely without fighting or resisting the emotion entirely. Simply allow it. And then ask yourself that question, when was the very first time I felt that way? When was the very first time that I experienced this emotion? And you may, depending on how visionary you are, have a lot of flashes or glimpses, you may not experience anything but a sudden knowing of when it was and follow your own intuition, listen to your own guidance of which memory to go with. Realize that you can't actually do this process wrong and oftentimes people get complete levels of healing through this process without actually having clarity in what's happening because the intensity of confronting these emotions and these experiences can be very overwhelming for some people with a lot of trauma. Um, when you go back to that memory, you want to relive it as if you're in the body of the child. 
and this is where your own body and the issues in your body can start to get activated. You're um, typically getting like a full energy clearing when you go into this state, depending on how um, well attuned to energy healing your practitioner is. There can be other added touches to it as well. Um, just by going into this, this state and recalling that memory, that emotion will start to flood back into your body and you can really, if you imagine you're in a dream and you're back in that child's body and start to relive the scene, notice the smells, notice the colors, notice everything around you, try to fine-tune your awareness of as many details as possible and pay attention to the emotional experience, the sensational experience as you relive this memory can be very painful. When you're working with a practitioner, you can reflect back and forth with them what's happening, recounting to them what's happening so that there's somebody really holding your hand and walking you through this journey. When you get to the end of the memory, you'll take your adult self, who you are today, through time and space and bring yourself into that memory and help your child, first of all, realize that the emotion they're experiencing it's totally valid. You will say things to the child like, you have every right to feel that way. You're totally right in feeling that way. I totally understand why you're experiencing that emotion. You don't need to get rid of that emotion. I'm here with you until that emotion is over. Say things like that to the child. So let them know that what they are is okay. They don't need to hide and fragment and separate from you anymore. Oftentimes the memories will be ones of great isolation, great turmoil when the child has felt left out, rejected, or pushed away. And so by validating those emotions, you're helping the child to heal. And really, you're helping yourself as well to stop escaping that emotion and go directly into it. The next part of the process is to ask the child what their needs are. So. Oftentimes these negative emotions arise because we have unmet needs as children and our outbursts are our attempts to get those needs met. And instead of the adults around us meeting our needs, they push those emotions down and the children continue to develop with unmet needs and that leads to an unhealthy emotional life. So to help the child meet their needs, ask them what is it you need? And oftentimes it's the resolution of a conflict between family members. Oftentimes it's the love and affection of a parent figure or a family member or a sibling or a friend. Oftentimes it's childlike play and wonder. And there are no wrong things for your inner child to want. Start with the kind of more mundane level things. And then, because this is an imaginal space, this is a dream space, I let your inner child have fun. Let your child do whatever they want. If they want to go play in the toys, let them play on with the toys. If they want to get on a magic carpet and fly to another part of the world, to a mystical enchanted forest, let them do that. If they want to meet dragons and unicorns, bring those beings into it. If you work with um, ascended light beings, um, any of your guides, these kinds of connections, you can bring those connections into your childhood memory and know that those higher beings, higher consciousness is working with your own inner child and helping them to integrate. Oftentimes these experiences are very helpful for that child. Even a, um, people that your, child, your inner child would really look up to and really respect and really feel safe with are great people to bring as your guides back to that child to help them integrate again. And after this point, um, when the child feels complete in the memory, in some ways, in some modalities, you can directly invite that child to come back and join you in your heart. And in the completion process, you take your child to this safe sit base, or your inner sanctuary. And there in your inner sanctuary, it's just an imaginal world. A world that you've created where all of your greatest joys and what makes you feel most excited and enthralled with life is all there. It can be a natural place that you know well, or it again can be like a fantasy unicorn den. However you want to create it. And in that place you'll bring your inner child and you'll bring them to a healing fountain or spring or waterfall. 
and just help them wash away that emotional charge and just let them play. Let yourself hold your inner child and really love the parts of yourself that are in that pain and in that struggle. And after a period of time you can then ask your child to come back into your heart and be one with you and whole with you again. And with any of these steps, you don't want to force your child to do anything. You want to give them as much time to feel and to decide on their own as they can. Oftentimes the trauma of the inner child is not being able to decide for themselves, not being able to express themselves, having to feel a way differently than what they are feeling to make other people feel comfortable. And so many of us carry these patterns out into our daily lives and inner child work is one of the best ways to gain greater self-awareness and greater emotional wholeness. This is a technique I totally recommend to absolutely everyone and it's something that has profoundly changed my life. <laughs> and it's something that I really love sharing. I do this in a lot of my cacao ceremonies, in group settings to help people together connect with their inner children and release a lot. And truly it's really powerful one-on-one. -on -one. And in that way you can reflect with your practitioner about the details of this as it's happening and really let yourself go deeper into that state. Um, not only will inner child help emotional issues, it helps with the physical issues that are a result of those emotional issues. And it helps with the relationships as well, because oftentimes the patterns in our relationship stem from those early childhood behaviors. So great examples of this are manipulative mother figures. When mommy used guilt to get you to behave a certain way, you'll still attract women or men who have that same pattern in your adult life. Because the guilt trap is still ingrained at a cellular level, you're habituated to respond a certain way. And you can really practice mindfulness and many techniques to change and shift those patterns in the moment, but there's nothing that really replaces going far back into the very root cause of when that emotional pattern first was initiated. So this is something I really recommend to everyone and I guess I should talk a little bit about my journey with doing the inner child work. Um, for me I was a child in a divorce so I was split in between both of my parents and they didn't like each other very much so I had to go through that on top of a lot of kind of really aggressive behavior when I didn't do what I was told to do. Um, my mother literally created an alternate personality called Mean Mommy who would come out when little Dante didn't do the things he was supposed to and I was absolutely terrified of this and really lived a lot of my early life in a deep state of fear. Now this is something totally uncommon and I laugh about it now because I've done a lot of work to free that inner child and allow him to be the playful, jovial being he is. And I can bring that kind of light energy into what I do now because I've gone back and reintegrated those memories so that they are happy and are joyful. Um, what I experienced as a child was no, nowhere near as bad as what a lot of people go through. So this process can be really helpful for people who have gone through great traumas. For me, it helped me discover my own patterns, uh, especially with guilt. And it's a pattern that still unravels bit by bit and I still go back sometimes to relive some of those memories and shift them. When I started doing this, I would notice that really deep things that I was feeling in my daily life would dissolve really quickly once I went back and allowed myself to acknowledge that while I may be experiencing this emotion right now as a result of things that are happening, I'm feeling it so deeply because it's something that isn't resolved from a previous time and to honor the continuity of our, our emotions, to realize that they're not just the re reaction to something outside, 
they're something that have been playing out for so long. And when we really go and let ourselves see how big and how vast they are, we can transform them much more easily. The inner child work as well really empowers us to use our imagination, something that has been discarded by so many people. And when we empower ourselves to realize our imagination creates realities, our imagination can change both our emotional experience and our relationships. And we can then use that tool to imagineer our lives in a new way and have fun with it. Again, as children, we have this lightness, this joy, and it's such a shame in our world that people, our society, just shuts that out of people because we believe we have to be serious in order to survive and fit into this framework of a culture that is really dominating. And so when we clear those patterns out and then let our inner child be, children be free, our lives can become that dance, that joyful play, and it's very easy to just, after a period of time, let that joy back out. Um, everyone has their own journey. For me, it has taken a, some years, maybe four or five years, and for others it takes a little bit longer. And it's really the journey, not the destination. Because every time you clear another pattern, you become aware of another memory, there's a bigger opening, and that bigger opening allows you to be and embody more of yourself in such an amazing way. Um, I really believe that children are the teachers of the future, and when we give our children the full permission to feel, and to play, and to learn through their play, instead of learning through the structure that we create, because we as adults think it's what's important for the world we have created, we will rediscover what is so important in play, and what is so Im easy to access when we're not living up here in the mind. When we're not living up here in the mind all the time, it's so much easier to connect to everyone around us, and to connect to bigger concepts, to connect to our source. And these patterns of societal abuse, really, that our children have to go through, can only end when we end them within ourselves. And when you start to practice this, you're also creating a world where the children of the future will not have to go through the same process. So doing this process on your own can help you as well to relate to children more. If you're a parent or if you're around children a lot, doing this process will help you to be more allowing of children's emotions more allowing of their imagination and more supportive to them in creating a more better and more <laughs> speaking so fast I am tripping over my words a more enlightened and better world so yes I fully believe in this and I fully believe in the power of play and the importance of our inner child and hopefully I will speak more about this in other videos if you have specific questions about a certain kind of inner child trauma or a certain sort of experience that you wish to apply inner child work to, please write to me. Any questions related to emotional healing or relationship patterns from childhood, ask me as well. If you want to experience a session working with childhood patterns and working with some of these techniques, feel free to message me. My website now is blissbeings.com, and on Facebook I am Dante Singh, or the page Be Bliss. Thank you for watching this, and may you enjoy this as the very best day ever, and shine your light with childlike joy. Bye-bye! <laughs>